All right, church, would you help me congratulate the class of 2020 today? Amen. They, uh, there's big things ahead of them because they figured this out without me telling. They came in and lined up, and Sydney was a great leader today. So class of 2020, as we uh, welcome you and congratulate you and celebrate you in and, and this service and pray over you and, and tell you how much we love you and how proud that we are of you today, a couple things that we want to say in, in recognizing that you were born for such a time as this. There isn't a one of us here that is afraid. There isn't a one of us here that does not believe that God has great plans. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you. This church, this pastor, this youth pastor, these amazing men and women of God that helped to raise you through your youth years are not fearful, but instead we are hopeful Instead, we believe and trust that there is an anointing on your life and God's going to complete it. And we celebrate you today. We love you so much. God bless you.
this morning. Don't do it a little bit. Give him all that you have this morning. Glory, glory, glory to God. How many of you have the victory this morning? We've got the victory. It's not in any other name but one. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. No other name given among men whereby we might be saved. We're rescued. We, can I say that again? We're rescued this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord gave me a scripture for us in this moment. I want you to quote it with me. We did this at first service and he reminded me again that this is for us today. It's for us to remember and to know. Pull this close inside of you. You may have heard of it. It's called the Shepherd's Song. You know it well. If you know it, I want you to say it out loud with me this morning. Are you ready? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now let's say this last verse with all we've got. Are you ready? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord couple of very special needs that we have to pray about this morning. want to lift up and, and pray for Sister Ed, Etta Kelly, who's in Atrium Hospital. She went in this last couple of days and is very sick and needs God to touch her, and we want to pray for her. Also, there's a young man. I, I wear his little, this is his little prayer. This is a prayer band that I've got around that he gave to me. His name is Brandon Morgan. This is Missy Osborne and, and Jason's nephew. This young man, 17 years old, is fighting cancer and going through chemotherapy. I want us to lift up Brandon Morgan. Can you just say his name with me real quick? Brandon Morgan. We're believing and praying that God is going to continue to touch him and minister to him. So I want us to pray for him. We're also pray, praying for Kim Frisch. Her husband, Gary, passed away this last week. And we want to lift her up and ask God to be with her through this very trying and difficult time. So I want you to help me as we pray. How many of you would say, Pastor, I have a need? And while we're singing amen to the promises of God, while we are absolutely declaring the word of God over every need, I want you to remember my need. How many of you have a need? Amen. As we do this, I want to say to all of those watching online, we are including you in this prayer. And that chat right there beside you while you're watching, would you just write your prayer request down? We take note of all of those and we pray over them during the week. And we want to include your prayer request right now, no matter where you are. And so let's, let's pray together over all these specific needs that we've mentioned. Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, saying amen and amen over every promise of the Lord. Your word says your promises are sure and amen. So we're praying today, God, in that name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ that you touch every life and every heart. Minister to Sister Etta Kelly today. Touch Sister Etta. Lay your hand on her. Strengthen her and be with her. Heal her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare the word of God over her. Ask you to touch Brandon, God. Lay your hand on this young man. Be with him. Thank you for the way that you're touching him. We believe your touch is on his life. Healing is on his life. And Lord, we're believing that and agreeing together today for strength, for supernatural peace, and for the presence of Almighty God to be with him. Lord, would you touch Sister Kim Frisch? Lay your hand on her. Let her feel the peace and the comfort of the Lord over her heart and mind. Lord, as she is hurting so much today, touch her for the difficult days that are ahead. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, according to your word, you said cast all of our care on you because you care for us. 
Lord, every need represented in this house this morning, whether that's healing or provision, deliverance, reconciliation, restoration, whatever it might be, God, we're asking you to provide the needs that are met, that need to be met in this house today. We pray in the name of Jesus, giving you every care, every concern, trusting and knowing our God is able. Heal and deliver and let your work be accomplished that we might give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. For it's in that name that we pray, the name of Jesus Christ. We give you honor. And now, Lord, I want all of us, if you will, to help me. Let's pray this prayer. Lord, I come against this COVID-19 virus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood over every child of God, every son, every daughter, every husband, every wife. God, I pray that this virus would not even be able to affect anyone. I come against it. Plead the blood of Christ over every life and ask your work to be done. Kill this virus. We ask you, Lord, to annihilate it in the name of Jesus by the precious blood. We rebuke it, send it back to hell where it came from, and ask you, God, to bring deliverance to your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone agreed and said amen and amen and amen. Let one more time give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And why don't you go ahead and shout with a shout, the triumph, that we know we're victorious in Him. Amen. Praise God. And now I know our youth minister, our, our student pastor, Cameron Jones, wants to honor and celebrate our graduates today. One more time, are we not very proud of all of our graduates today? We honor you today. Thank you. Amen. Amen. As you're seated today, I know why I came this morning. It's to praise the name of Jesus. It's nothing's going to stop the preaching of Jesus Christ and the gospel or the praising of Jesus Christ and the gospel. And I know I'm here today to do that very thing and live my life. And I know you do too to lift up and proclaim his name. Today is a very special day, not just for our young people but also, and their families, but also for our church. And, and it's a special day for me, but, but also for our church. And in the scripture, it says this, when Peter was restored by Jesus, the first thing that Jesus said to him was, feed my lambs. I think that there's a responsibility on the people of God a responsibility on his church and the body of Christ to raise up young people to know and to love Jesus Christ. We know this, that faith is more caught than taught. I guess I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in preacher mode. But it's caught. It's caught. And as we raise up young people and they experience, as we experience Christ, uh, weird things happen. Uh, they begin to experience Christ. So there are many times I have my little girls and bring them in here on Sunday mornings just because they experience Christ where they're at and at their level, but also to come in here to catch the faith that's in this room today. And I love it, and I love experiencing it for myself. And these young people today, we have raised, and now they go off into the next season of their life today. And so as, as we call their names, I'm going to call out their names and their bios today and share a little bit about them. Sydney Renee Albright. As she comes to the stage, she is the daughter of David and Sherry Albright, and she is a graduate of Middletown High School. Any middies in here today? I don't know if there is. But Sydney's academics, academic achievements include National Honor Society for two years. She maintained a 4.0 GPA all four years. I always wondered what that stood for in school. But anyways, a 4.0 GPA all four years. Ohio means jobs, readiness, SEAL, future climbers, leadership program, top 10% of her class, and graduated. Hear this, y'all, and help me appreciate. She graduated summa cum laude. Somebody help me just appreciate that. That sounds awesome. Whatever it is, that sounds amazing. I'm kidding. But while in high school, Sydney was involved in Spanish club, yearbook team, Atrium Medical Center internship. She passed her youth pastor driving to the church every day as she went to the hospital. Midi mentors and student government. Here at Stratford, Sydney has been involved in 
My goodness, here, here. Oasis Youth Altered Worship Team, Relentless Drama Team, Redemption Youth Choir. She was voted the Oasis Queen 2020 Teen Talent on the national level and the state level. Oklahoma Missions Trip. Praise God. We know people from Oklahoma need Jesus for sure. <laughs> VBS every year. Shalom. Youth Camp as a participant and a staff member. Exaltation Choir, Gary said. Amen to that, Pastor Gary. And Bright Beginnings Nursery Volunteer. Sydney's future plans are to attend Wright State University. Mom cried because she's closer than Lee, Lee University on that. But to pursue a Bachelor of Science in Nursing and to one day work in as a labor and delivery nurse. Help me celebrate Miss Sydney Renee Albright. Amen. All right. Lydia Marie Bringleman. Lydia is the daughter of Craig and Carol Bringleman and is a graduate of our very own Ohio Christian Academy. Can we welcome her today? Lydia's many academic achievements include high honors for four years, Student of the Year, Christian Character Award, which is the highest award that can be given uh, by the, the Christian Academy, uh, OCA, and, a, and completed 20-plus college credit hours. She just graduated high school, and she's already completed that many credit hours. While in high school, Lydia was involved in the OCA worship band. You would see her, her purple guitar, just like Gary. She learned that from Pastor Gary, just that essential just that I love I love that worship that she gives and she's also varsity involved in varsity gymnastics and missions trips to happy church which is in Kentucky an amazing ministry that OCA has started and is a part of here at Stratford Lydia has been involved in Oasis youth and uh, Lydia's future plans are to attend Malone University on academic and diving team scholarships she plans to major in special education and early childhood development Miss Lydia Marie Bringleman this morning. Amen. I'm already uh, fired up for our future. There's some amazing young people. Abigail Caskey. Abigail is the daughter of Kevin and Heather Caskey. She is a graduate of Valley View High School and in and Sinclair Community College. Did you hear what I said there? She's a graduate of Valley View High School and Sinclair Community College. Abigail's academic and chief. Matter of fact, can we welcome her too? I just, this is, she's grown up at this church her whole life. Amazing parents and family. Abigail's academic achievements include National Honor Society, National Arts Honor Society, representative at Buckeye Girls State, honors diploma, and earned an Associates of Liberal Arts already from Sinclair. Uh, while in high school, Abigail was involved in varsity tennis, marching band, drum major for marching band, saxophone quartet, symphonic band, pep band, school musical, varsity academic team. I know Kevin's out of breath. I'm out of breath just reading these. I can imagine... Uh, taking and being a part of all of this as a parent to school musical varsity academic team book club volunteered at Dayton Children's Hospital my goodness what, what an amazing young lady Abigail's future plans are to attend Xavier University to major in pre-med biological sciences and minor in music performance Miss Abigail Kasky this morning Can I be jealous? I don't know. I'm 40. She's 18. I don't, I don't know. But I am so uh, thankful and uh, appreciative of what God has ahead of her and in her life right now. Kayla Ann Flannery. Can we welcome her today? <clears throat> Kayla is the daughter of Kevin and Ellen Flannery and is a graduate of Madison High School. Kayla's academic achievements. There's some, some uh, Madison... Help me, help me, Madison. What Mohawks? Madison Mohawks. I'm sorry. Don't, don't, uh, yeah, don't, don't hurt me, Madison Mohawks. While in high school, she her ac academic achievements include top 20 in her class. While in high school, she was involved in FCCLA, where she served as president and did skills competitions. She was a part of varsity soccer and the color guard. 
for the criminal justice class at Butler Tech. Here at Stratford, Kayla has been involved with volunteering in Bright Beginnings Nursery, also in Rock Island. She's served. Uh, Kayla's future plans are to attend Eastern Kentucky University and to study forensic scientists or science. Every criminal, watch out, Miss Kayla and Flannery today. All right, Mason Troy Flannery. Can we welcome him today to aptly named after a great man? Mason is the son of Kevin and Ellen Flannery, and he is also a graduate of Madison High School. There we go. I'll give you their opportunity. Mason's academic achievements include top 20 in his class, honor roll, and an Eagle Scout. While in high school, Mason was involved in jazz band, soccer, and the school board's game club. His future plans are to attend Miami University, and has he said it, and I told him, I said, that, that, that isn't just, but he said, I'm just going to Miami University to study computer science. He is going to Miami University to study computer science. Would you help me welcome or appreciate and celebrate Mr. Mason Troy Flannery? All right. Autumn Lynn Jones. Can we celebrate her as she comes today? My namesake right here. I got a Jones here. The daughter of Ken and Ann Jones is a graduate of Middletown High School. Okay. While in high school, Autumn was involved in, in softball, SSLA, and the Family Career and Community Leaders of America. Here at Stratford, Autumn has been involved with Oasis Youth, also was uh, involved with the Relentless Drama Team. Uh, Adam's future plan, or Autumn's, not Adam's, Autumn's. Ooh. Autumn's future plans are to continue her education at Cincinnati State before transferring to the University of Kentucky for health science. Autumn's plans to be, are to become a sports trainer. Miss Autumn Lynn Jones, how amazing. All right. This is going to get loud for a second. I'm just warning you, okay? Kyra McKenzie Faye Mata. Can we celebrate her today? She is the daughter of Jose and Crystal Mata, and she is a graduate of Monroe High School and Butler Tech Bioscience Center. Kyra's academic achievements include honor roll student and first place in HOSA. While in high school, Kyra was involved in pharma ecology, blood donor where she earned the red cord. She participated in the STEM program project lead and also project lead the way. Here at Stratford, Kyra has been involved with Oasis Youth, the relentless drama team, and has been active several years in uh, our VBS programs. Her future plans are to attend the University of Cincinnati Summer Bridge program. Kyra and eight other students were selected for this program from over 2,000 applicants. In the fall, Kyra will continue her education at UC where she plans to major in nursing to become a neonatal nurse practitioner. Ms. Kyra McKenzie Fay Mata. All right, my goodness. This is a smart crew right here. Hannah Elizabeth McCoy. Can we celebrate her as she comes today? She is the daughter of Daryl and Denise McCoy, Reverend Daryl and Denise McCoy, and is a graduate of Fairfield High School. Hannah's academic achievements include honors diploma. While in high school, Hannah was involved in four years of marching band, where she was a section leader, jazz band, chamber wins, solo and ensemble competition. Here at Stratford, she was heavily involved, and she was involved with Oasis Youth, Altered Worship Team, Redemption Youth Choir, Relentless Drama Team, Team Talent, Ohio, Oklahoma Missions Trip, VBS, Shalom, Youth Camp as participant and staff, Exaltation Choir, Bright Beginnings a Nursery Volunteer, and just about anything else I asked her to do, she would be a part of. 
Hannah's future plans are to attend Lee University or anybody asked her to do. Hannah's future plans are to attend Lee University and major in psychology to become a counselor. Listen to this. To help kids and teenagers with mental illness and trauma. My goodness. She also plans... She also plans to continue to minister through drama. Amen to that. Miss Hannah Elizabeth McCoy today. All right, Jan Luis Soto Rosario. Can we celebrate him as he comes? He is the son of Rosana Ros Rosario and Luis Soto and is a graduate of Middletown High School and Butler Tech IT program. While in high school, Jan was involved in baseball, an orchestra where he played the upright bass. How about that? How about that? Here at Stratford, Jan has been involved in Oasis Youth. He's volunteered with Rock Island events. He's volunteered uh, several times and served uh, in Oasis Youth and different events. He lives next door. Poor guy. I call him all the time, and I know when he sees my name, he probably, uh, okay. Uh, Jan's future plans are to continue his education at Wright State University before enlisting, en enlisting into the Air Force. Mr. Jan Luis Soto Rosario. All right, Sydney Nicole Scott Williams, would you come to the stage as we celebrate her this morning? She is the daughter of John and Stacy Williams. Stacy, keep it together wherever you are today. Try your best. Um, and she is a graduate of the Ohio Christian Academy. Sydney's academic achievements include valedictorian. 4.0 GPA. She, she's already earned 18 college credits. She's received academic honors in all subject areas and received OCA Student of the Year Award. While in high school, Sydney was involved in soccer for Preble Shawnee, OCA, OCA Worship Band, <laughs> vocalist and pianist, school drama productions, mission trips to Happy Church, peer mentorship, academic tutor, and she gave piano lessons. I don't know how she had time here. Here at Stratford, Sydney, she's been involved in Oasis Youth, altered worship teams, relentless drama teams, teen talent, VBS, a Rock Island church, uh, Rock Island kids church volunteer. Sydney's future plans are to attend Lee University and major in biological science with a pre-veterinary emphasis. Sydney's plan is to become a veterinarian. Miss Sydney Nicole Scott Williams today. I told her I didn't even cry. I made it. You know, I made it through that. So Jaden McKenzie Lee today. Can we celebrate her? She comes. We'll move over. We'll, we'll, we'll do this college grad here and then go back to one last uh, high school grad that we're going to read her bio today. But, but Jaden is the daughter of Jay and Samantha Lee. She is a graduate of, I hate saying this, but I'll do it just because I know where I am, The Ohio State University. I won't say oh wait, so I won't say that. But with a bachelor's of art degree in psychology with minors in human development and family science with integrative approaches to health and wellness. My kid is smart right here for sure. Jaden's academic and achievements include graduating summa cum laude. While at The Ohio State University, Jaden was involved in Residence Life Council, president of Chi Alpha Christian Fellowship, public relations manager of the Love Your Melon campus crew. You've got to talk to her about that. Buckeye Thon, team member, volunteered at the Ronald McDonald House and also volunteered at the Columbus Dream Center. Here at Stratford, Jaden has been involved with Oasis Youth VBS. She's a Rock Island Kids Church volunteer and has been for several years. Jaden is continuing her education at the Ohio State University where she has already began her occupational therapy doctorate program. Miss Jaden McKenzie Lee today. Just a second here.
to read one more of these uh, bios. Maybe if Missy's in here, she can maybe come and help me for a second here. Also, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go go forward to uh, Haley Alexandra Brashear Pruitt. So can we celebrate her today? She is the wife of Ryan Pruitt and daughter Tammy Brashear, and she is a graduate of Wright State University with a Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, and the University of Cincinnati with an associate degree in physical therapist as, as in physical therapist assistant. Uh, Haley's academic achievements include Dean's List at Wright State University and University of Cincinnati and a GPA of 3.6. Here at Stratford, Haley is involved in Exaltation Choir. She is the coach of the co-ed softball team. <laughs> and Family Life Night Kids Softball Program. Haley is a, a currently an assistant in the online physical therapist assistant courses to help the class of 2021 learn new skills. Haley plans to continue her education and pursue a doctorate degree in physical therapy. Miss Haley Alessandria Brashear Pruitt today. Amen. Amen. Evan. Evan Matthew Rollins, son of Brian and Mary Beth Rollins. Can we celebrate him as he comes? He is a graduate of Lee University, my alma mater. I don't have any. I think we're flames, I think. So that's what we are. With a bachelor's degree in music and worship with an emphasis in voice and a minor in deaf studies. Wow. Evan's academic achievements include 2015 presidential scholarship. While at Lee University, he was involved in symphonic band, choral union, and served as a section leader, men's choral, and the jazz ensemble. Here at Stratford, Evan has been involved with Exaltation, where he completed an internship under Pastor Gary, Oasis, an altered worship team, and our sound team. He is currently looking for a worship leader position in a church somewhere. Mr. Evan Matthew Rollins today. All right, I wanted to read another bio here, and I was looking for it, couldn't, couldn't find it in here, so is that, okay, okay, all right, well, hey, y'all bear with me right now, here we go, I found it, I found it, okay, Kaylin Marie McRoberts, she was unable to be here today, but I wanted to read her bio because I love her so much and wanted to respect and honor her and her, her parents today as we have uh, done this today. She was unable to be here, but she is the daughter of Scott and Michelle McRoberts and is a graduate of Franklin High School. Kaylin's academic achievements include four-year honor student. While in high school, Kaylin was involved in four-year varsity swimmer, swim captain, student government, link crew, leaders, leader for teens for Christ, fellowship of Christian athletes, Middletown Community Youth Foundation, which is amazing. Uh, Foundation, American Heart Association, Summertime for Kids Programs, and the Babbitt Kindergarten Pro Program. Here at Stratford, Kalen has been involved with Oasis Youth, Altered Worship Team, Relentless Drama Team, Teen Talent, and she gives it all in Teen Talent, and VBS, and Shalom Ministry. Kalen's future plans are to attend Regent University in Virginia Beach where she received merit academic scholarship. She plans to major in biblical and theolo theological studies with a minor in psychology. Sydney plans, not Sydney, Kalen plans to become a veterinarian also. Miss Kalen Marie McRoberts today. Let's take a picture. <laughs> Amen. Amazing, amazing young people. I have one more bio that I want to read here if I can, and then we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be done today if I can get to it. James Allen Jones. James Allen Jones is the husband of Beverly Jones. He's the son of Willie and Annie Lori Jones and the dad of Jamie Kelly and myself. And as of... Oh, no, no. You don't have to worry about coming. 
You're good. You're good. We'll celebrate you from there. Do you want them to come? Okay, come on up. Come on up then. Yeah. In 1973, after his junior year at Lee University, he felt the call of God to the mission field of New Mexico. Very little churches there, very little church of, even less church of God's. And he got a call and felt the leading of the Holy Spirit to go out west. And in doing that, he still became, he was a a constant lifelong learner. But because of proximity and the lack of technology in those days, he pursued his degree. But it, it was very difficult. He attended just about every university in every town he lived in to finish up that, that last year. Probably has enough credits to have his master's right now. But because of just losing the, um, the transcripts and different things that were going on, they just never would declare uh, his, his, uh, his degree or give him his degree. And so in doing that, I might say he met my mom. So he made a good decision. Somebody say amen to that. I think he did. So he went out. And just this last, about four months ago, he got an email from Dr. Paul Kahn, and they awarded him his, his degree in pastoral ministries today, or this, this spring. It's not a bucket list thing, but it is definitely something that he desired and and wanted. And I just really feel like God honored that and took care of that through all of this. He wanted to go down and walk in August, but you know what? He decided not to do that. So we just embarrassed him and surprised him here today. Also, also some of these graduates that were unable to attend and participate. Jordan Stephen Childers, the son of son of Stephen and Melissa Childers, graduated from Alpha Omega Academy. Gabe Hardesty, the son of Christine Blevins, and the late Robert Blevins, a graduate from Madison High School. Memphis Hill, the son of Sarah, was a graduate from Franklin High School. Michael Hines, the son of Mike and Sandy Hines, graduated from Middletown. Brandon Lanier, we celebrated already, was a graduate of OCA and uh, Max Center. The son of Carla Center graduated from Xenia High School. Jazz Marie Alyssa Bailey Tompkins. She was the daughter of Heather Tompkins. She would have been here today but was unable to attend. And Jason Bailey, she graduated from Middletown Christian. Also, Michelle Stephanie Yalari, daughter of Martha Kuyamarka and, and, uh, and graduated from Middle Miamisburg High School. College Sa- son Samuel Abner, son of Todd and Angie Abner, graduate from Lipscomb University. Help me clap right here. That'll help me get through these. Ariel Atkins, the wife. This says the wife of Tyler Atkins. Maybe Tyler's the husband. Okay, here we go. Graduated from Miami University. Tyler Atkins, the husband of Ariel Atkins. Graduated from the University of Cincinnati. Evan Kelly, who will be the future president. I've been saying that for a long time. Son of Sean and Angie Kelly. Graduated from Os- Asbury University. Matthew McCoy, Re- Redemption School of Ministry. Can we celebrate and honor these young people today? Yeah, and also I have, I have another, I, I missed Alondra Rivera also. She's a graduate of, of Ohio Christian Academy and the daughter of Luciana Torres and Jose Cora. I wanted to read one more bio. Look, look at y'all. I feel like a preacher right now. I'm almost done, right? But this one's so important and so special to us as, as all of them are. But I wanted to read and get the honor of reading uh, Taylor Nicole Sargent's bio this morning. She's the daughter of John and Sarah Sargent, and she is a graduate this year of Lebanon High School. While in high school, Taylor was involved in Nitro Elite cheerleading, bridge riding for the disabled, the Tim Tebow Night to Shine prom, and the Miracle League Baseball Baseball League. Here at Stratford, Taylor has been involved with respite ministry. Because of the miracle that Taylor is, there is now an inclusive, handicap, accessible playground equipment located at a few locations in Lebanon. which both kids with disabilities and without disabilities can play together. There was also a respite ministry called Through the Roof, free respite and rest time that started for families and children with disabilities. Her future plans are to still keep showing the love and miracles of God through her smile, her joy, and her excitement for life. Miss Taylor Nicole Sargent today. Amen. 
I mean, would you stand to your feet with me today? And graduates, would you stand today? We're going to say a, a, a prayer over you. And if there's, there's two things that I would always say, and I say it to every graduate, number one is this, is always trust the heart of God. You, you can say, somebody says, follow your heart, and, and, and I understand that. That's good. If you delight yourself in the Lord, then he'll give you the desires of your heart. If you're delighting, then it's his heart that you have. But follow his heart for your life. And this is the other thing, is his wisdom is eternal. It's from everlasting to everlasting. Things will come and things will go, but his word will always remain. Would you bow your heads in church? Can we pray a prayer that asks God to protect them, that asks God to lead them, to ask God to just send them out into where, where God's called them to be? Father, we love you and we thank you and we praise you, God, for your goodness. We praise you and we thank you that you've been with us. We praise you and thank you that you're the God of our salvation. And Lord, we pray a prayer over these young people and we ask them, God, to uh, you to bless them and you to put your hand upon them, God, in all things. God, never let them be comfortable outside the will of God. God, I pray your Holy Spirit would always draw them, God, to you. And Father, as they stay in your will, Father, they'd see your work unfold before them and they'd praise you. And Lord, we thank you that you've just begun to work in their beautiful and incredible lives. And God, we give you praise for that and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. You may be seated. Thank you. Well, we absolutely celebrate each of you and so thankful for you. Um, it's time for us to, uh, well, I think what we'll do is we're going to move forward in the service and we'll collect our, our, if you've come and brought your gifts for the offering, we'll do that at the, con at the conclusion of our service and we'll, uh, we'll move on right now with uh, worship and then the word and we'll uh, we'll be expedient about that all right as I was thinking about the service this morning and about the brads I wanted the music to work just sing it once
your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. graduates we love you you know uh, we're so proud of you and every minute of today don't you worry about the time it takes to honor you and to celebrate you because we're proud to do that we love it don't we love them aren't we so proud of them you are awesome you're a special guest today and I have a quick word I'm gonna try, if you want to get the whole thing look at the nine o'clock service but you're gonna get a, a, a part of the word of this morning that is going to be important for you to take with you as you leave. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Paul writing here, it's part of our series today is finish the race, finish well. And that's what I challenge you with, guys, that as you graduate from high school and college, that you know, the whole world opens up to you. The transitions are going to be major over the next little while. And as you consider your steps, trust and know that God's got your back. And the Lord is going to take care of you in everything that you do. I believe that with all my heart. Paul says, do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run your race that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours now every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win a wreath that will soon wither. But we do it, we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither away. Therefore, I do not run uncertainly or without definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an adversary. But like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships, and subdue it. For fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved, and rejected as a counterfeit or 
as the King James Version says, that I would become a castaway. Let's pray today. Father, as we come to you, we thank you for your precious word. Ask you to speak to us in these few moments that, Lord, your work, your will will be accomplished in the lives of these graduates that we love and we honor today. May our church be blessed as we honor your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Anyone who's driven to win a gold medal, anyone who is driven to win a prize of sorts, but a gold medal more particularly, if you've ever watched documentaries or you've seen television shows where they kind of highlight the lives of these folks that, that are superior in their athletic ability and they win the gold medal in Olympics, you, you find that when you trace over their lives, they're very committed, dedicated, disciplined. I mean, it's ruthless. They literally are just driven to live a life of complete sacrifice. Uh, morning, noon, nighttime, it's all about training. They don't miss it. They don't mess it up. Their pursuit and their discipline is unbelievable. It consumes them in every way. They're, they're full of, of literally a driving passion that won't even allow them to get off track. Tomorrow is full of possibilities, endless possibilities for you. I wrote this down. It's, it's, I wish it was mine. It's somebody else's quote, but it says, if you can dream it, you can do it. I challenge you to be successful. In church, you're not allowed to just sit back and, and say amen to me talking to them because actually these principles are important for all of us as well. I challenge you and the graduates to be successful. I believe that we as Christians ought to be the successful, the most successful people there is in the world around us. And you say, well, what does that mean? Well, what's successful in my eyes and in my heart is to fulfill the purpose of your life, to be, to do that to the very best of your ability. I believe as Christians, we ought to be the best employees. We ought to be the best husbands, guys. We ought to be the best wives, ladies. We ought to be the best children, Young people, as you're here today and your parents are, are perhaps here with you, best children. We ought to be the best neighbors that we can be. Nobody ought to be walking around rolling their eyes over you in your neighborhood. If you're on the job, you ought to be the best employee. That doesn't mean you, you are the one that, that gets all the, the, the prizes and wins all the trophies. But what it means is that you are the one that represents where you have come from, and that is from a place of mercy and grace in Jesus Christ. You ought to be the best employee. Your boss ought to look at you when you walk in and be thankful that you walked in. When you walk in, that place you work ought to be blessed because you are there. We are living in a time when we don't understand the importance of who we are in him. Best wives, best husbands, best children, best neighbors. We ought to be the best citizens we need to be the best at those things. And what I mean when I say that is to be excellent in all that you do. Be the, be, do it with completion and do it with responsibility. Do it with accountability. And get, can I say this? We ought to be the best Christians that we can be. We represent Christ. We represent that heaven has saw fit to send God's only son to cleanse, wash, and forgive us, fill us with his Holy Ghost, and we need to walk around like we own that. I mean, it ought to be something that we reflect and represent everywhere we go. When you walk in the grocery store, when you walk in the restaurant, I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up, there was a, a, a visiting evangelist not too many years ago that came here, and, and we went out to eat after service, and and I was just absolutely embarrassed. I was humiliated. By the time it was done, my red face was redder than normal. And I couldn't believe a, a waitress who was walking away from our table in tears because of this evangelist that was so rude to her. He was mean. He was crabby. Nothing worked right for him. And he talked down to her the entire time. I did everything in my power to try to change the conversation. But I figured at the end of it, the best thing to do was hand her a $50 bill and say, I'm so sorry. Please forgive us. There's nothing 
more ridiculous than someone who claims to have been cleansed, washed, sanctified, living a holy and dedicated life out there misrepresenting the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a servant and he loved and gave his life. He showed us an example. He said, who will be great among you? Let him be servant of all. I don't understand crabby Christians. I don't understand mean, insulting Christians. I'm not like that. I don't understand you at all. You go places and you exert your authority and you tell people off. You give them a piece of your mind. And I don't know what Lord you're serving. Because the one that I got that came into my life, man, he humbled me. He completely broke me, and I stand before him today. I'm not worthy to walk in the doors of this church. I am not. I may be standing behind this pulpit, but I'm only standing here because I've been assigned and given a task I have to complete. But as far as earning it, worthy of it, I don't deserve that. My righteousness is as filthy rags before God. My righteousness, if I have any hope at all to stand on streets of gold, is because of Jesus Christ who gave his life for me and shed his blood for me. That hope I carry in my life and in my heart. I don't understand Christians that misrepresent. I don't understand sinners who are allowed and who are given the, the, the excuse to be able to say, I don't go to church because of all the hypocrites. I don't understand that. It hurts and breaks my heart. Be the real deal. Be the real deal. Understand that we are running a race. And he says, don't just run the race. Run the race that you may lay hold of the prize. Make it yours. Colossians 3 and 23. Whatever you do, do it heartily. 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 Do it excellently. Do it with all of your might as to the Lord and not to men. I'd like to see you treat some of the waitresses and some of the servers at your restaurant as if they were Jesus serving your table. I'd like you to walk down through your neighborhood and start treating your neighbors like Jesus lived in that house. I'd like it if we started wearing that old bracelet again, WWJD. We need to pull it back out, don't we, in 2020? Because we need to understand there's a bunch of people out there using you as an excuse as to why they don't want to serve God. I want people to look at my life, and as, when they look at me, I don't want them to see me. I don't want them to see excuses. I don't want them to see meanness and crabbiness and self-centeredness. I want them to see a broken servant who is willing to love Love them and honor them no matter where they come from, no matter what they've been involved in. I want to be somebody that they can look and say, man, I know God is real because of them. I want, to, I want their God. I want to serve their God. So I challenge you, graduates, be the real deal. Run the race to win the prize. What's the prize? What is the prize? Well, I'll tell you what the prize is. The prize is winning Jesus himself. Winning Jesus, having him in your life. So many people get caught up in the competition. They get caught up in the race. Don't get caught up in the race. Don't even get caught up in all the discipline and, and all that because th that's what the church did years ago. And it became a list of do's and don'ts and all kinds of rules and regulations. And holiness was defined by the what you wore and how you looked and how short your hair was or how long your hair was or whether you wore makeup or didn't wear makeup, had jewelry or didn't wear jewelry, had shorts or didn't wear shorts. Th there were so many rules that we didn't understand what it meant to even be holy. But what I found out is that in the long run, I finally figured it out one day. If I will dedicate, surrender, and sacrifice my life on the altar of repentance, he comes along and does all the cleaning up that needs to be done in my life. I found that holiness begins to come out of me as an expression of my love and my honor to the Lord himself. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Don't get stuck on the race Get focused on crossing the finish line. That's what we want. We want to win the prize. You don't just run the race just to run. You don't beat your body down and discipline it and eat all the right stuff and work out all the time. And somebody says, why are you doing that? Because I just like to beat myself up. You don't do it for that. 
You do it for a prize. You do it to win. Paul said, don't, don't run. Don't beat the air. Don't, don't live your life following all these guidelines and routines and rules and traditions without a goal. He said, the goal, the, the prize is Christ. He said, the value of it. I, I went to, years ago, we took a mission trip when I was a youth pastor here. We took a trip, and we were in Belgium for several days, and we were doing English youth camps. And in the middle of that, we took two days and went to Paris, France. Yeah, we had it tough. But in that process, we, we stopped by the Louvre, this, this museum in Paris. And, and, and we were looking at all these fantastic, beautiful pieces of artwork. And all of a sudden, we walked into this huge, big room. It was, uh, it was huge. It just probably took up about half of this room. And as we walked in this huge corridor, there was nothing else in the room. No paintings, no statues. There was nothing on the walls or in the floor anywhere except at the very back of the room, behind glass, was this one solitary painting, the Mona Lisa. It was awesome. There was a hundred people standing in there silent. They all walked back and they're all standing there taking a picture of this painting behind the glass. You see, this painting by Leonardo da Vinci is so famous, so treasurable, so valuable. They built this entire room in this museum to house that one painting. And there it was, hanging on the wall. And of course, you know I did it. I didn't tell the the, the first service this, but I was with about 12 young people. We were walking in this room, and, and I was like, I'm going to do it. And they were like, no, 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 Ray, don't do it, don't do it. I said, yep, I'm going to do it. And so in that resounding, echoing hall, I stood there at the painting, and I said, Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. I never heard so many 100 French people cackling and laughing in all of my life. But this room was built for the sole purpose of housing this treasure. They thought it was worth it. They knew its value. Oh, this morning, if we could only understand the value of the blood of Jesus Christ, the value of our King, it's more than religion. It's more than just having a name on a roll. It's more than just a denomination or a credential. It's more than all of those things. It's more than a Bible reading plan, even though we need those and that's good. It's more than that. If we only understood, Paul said it best in Philippians 3 and 7, he said, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through Christ in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And then he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. That is such a powerful, intense, amazing statement right there. Paul saying, what I'm my game, what, here's my aim, here's why I'm running, here's why I'm disciplined, here's why I'm completely surrendering and sacrificing my life because at the end of it all, I want to know him. I don't want to know about him. I don't want you to tell me about him. I want to know him for myself. I want to have him in my life. If he's king of all kings, I want him to be my king of all kings. If he's Lord of lords, I want him to be Lord of of my life. I want to know him, he said. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. It's pretty intense. That's pretty amazing. In the fellowship, have you suffered for the sake of cause of Christ? Have you felt the wrestling match? Have you striven? Have you, have you had to fight your way through? Of course you have. As we've mentioned the last two weeks, we enter this thing. We're in a fight. We're in a battle. You're in a battle. You, you think school, school was tough and school was hard, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait until you get out here and you got to make your own way and pay your own light bill. 
<laughs> Amen. It's a real world with real evil everywhere. And you've been protected up to this point, And you've been prayed over. And you'll continue to be prayed over. Your church is proud of you. Your pastors are proud of you. Proud of you. Amen. But we're challenging you not just to get out there in the rat race. We're wanting you to run the race. The race of eternal life. Where the prize at the end is not just a ribbon. The prize is not just a trophy. It's not just a toy. The prize at the end is Jesus. It's him in your life and in your heart. Paul went on to write, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus also has laid hold of me. He said, brothers, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind, and I reach toward forward to those things which are ahead. He said, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. The prize, imperishable, the crown, incomparable, unfading, and glorious. Jesus is the prize. We're not looking for a crown. We're looking for the one who wears the crown. We're looking at the one who wears the crown, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace. The Bible calls him the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. This is who we're serving, the day spring, the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The Bible goes on to call him so many beautiful things. He's got name after name after name. He's the bread of life. He's everything that you and I need. When Moses was told, who, who is going to send me? Who should I tell them has sent me? God in the Old Testament spoke to him and said, you tell him, you tell them that I am sent you. I am, that's who we're serving. That's That's the prize at the end of the race of this life. It's the race that we're all in. But we've got to understand the focus keeps us going, moving, marching on towards a prize that will last for all of eternity. The wreath and the toys and the houses and the cars, even the documents you'll hang on your wall, they'll all fade. They'll all die away. They'll all be thrown away after long, long, many, many years. But what won't die and what won't fade It's that relationship with Christ that takes you all the way to glory. That relationship with him. So we run the race. Hebrews 12 and 1, and I'm getting ready. Help me. Give me land of plane music. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The price is worth it. Heaven is worth it. Guys, don't lose focus. Don't get caught up in the rat race. Don't get caught up in the arms race. Please don't get caught up in the election race. Look to Jesus, the author, the finisher. I remember the first time I ever understood and read that scripture I read to you a few moments ago from Philippians. I was a teenager like you, and I was in my bedroom, and I opened up my curtains, and I was desperately trying so hard to just understand this relationship with Jesus. I wanted so much to do right. I wanted to be right. I wanted to be a success. I'd fought and ran and lived in church my whole life, but yet here I was at this crossroads where it was like, this can't be my mommy's religion anymore. It's got to be mine. It's got to be my faith. What do I believe? And I wrestled, man. For six months I wrestled. But I remember once I'd made a decision and he had revealed himself to me in so many beautiful ways. I remember one night looking out the window of my house and the sky was dark and the moon was out and the stars were out. And I was like, God, could I just like see an angel? Could you just show me something, a door, something? Just show me something. And in my mind and in my heart, all I saw was a picture, Jan. I saw this picture 
of rain and thunder and lightning in Jesus hanging on a cross. And I saw him in this, this picture that came into my mind. I didn't see anything in the clouds or in the, the moon or the stars outside, but I saw this in my heart, this picture of Christ in this terrible storm. And all he said to me was, I love you. I began to weep and then I began to quote that scripture. I said, that I may know him. I want to know you. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. And I began to weep and I ended up on my face in the carpet of my bedroom. I had blue carpet. I put my face down in there and I I said, God, I want to know you. I don't want to know about you. I want to know you. I want to have you in my life. I want to know what I'm doing, what all this is about. And man, I'm telling you, he surrounded me with his presence. I felt his power. I knew right then and there that there was something significant that was happening in my life. I want you to have the encounter, the experience of, of what it is to finish the race. I want you to know that the prize that waits in front of you, he's worth it. He's worth every sacrifice. He's worth not getting distracted by the things out here in the world. They'll all try to tell you all kinds of things. They'll try to change your thinking, steal your faith. They'll try and tell you that it's all worthless and it's not real let me pull you in on something if you're going to be in science be the best that you can be you're going to work with people be the best that you can be you're going to do sports you're going to do medical stuff you're going to be a doctor are you going to do all those things good on you mate go and do it to the best of your ability be the best that you can possibly be but do it as someone who's representing the true prize, Jesus Christ. Go out there and be excellent at it and know that he's got your back. He's gonna bless you. He's gonna open doors. He's gonna make opportunities. I stand here today, a kid way back in the day. I don't know how I got here and I don't know how long it'll last. I'm just here riding the wave until he's done with me. But I will tell you this, I never dreamed in a million years as an 18 year old slipping in the back door that God would ever anoint me and give me the task to be a pastor of this great church. All I know is this, you put your dreams in his hands and he will shock you. He'll surprise you. He'll overwhelm you. The excellence that waits in front of you is going to blow your mind. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Stay on track. Amen. Stand with me this morning. David was hungry for the Lord. He said, as the deer pants for the water brook, so does my soul thirst after you, O God. Church, I'm challenging not only these graduates, I'm challenging you and I, challenging you and I to let go of the flesh, let go of the the things that distract you, that, that cause you to be, you know, you've been in this for so long that sometimes we get caught up in our routines or we get caught up in the world around us. Man, keep your eyes on the eastern sky. Understand and get through every day. Somebody's worried, somebody's full of fear. I like what Janelle said the other day. Janelle was in our staff meeting and she said, I'm okay, I'm all right with all this. If you've read any of her Facebook, you know, she just went through a scare, a bout of cancer, had to have surgery. But God brought her out of it and she's cancer free this morning. You know, God brought her out of it. But during those times, during those times when she was so, so concerned, she had to give it to God. I mean, you've got the COVID nightmare and you've got all the, 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 the tensions in the world and all the fighting and, and all the people that, that don't feel loved. There's a lot of oppressed, hurting people in the world. And we are called to love every human being, everybody, no matter who they are, no matter where they're from, no matter what language they speak, no matter what color they are, we're to love all people because we are Jesus. We're supposed to love everybody. And that, that we see all this. And and one of the things she said, she looked at us and she said, you know, I, I don't, I'm not worried about any of this because at the end of the day, it just means we're closer than we've ever been to the coming of the Lord. He's on his way. The Bible tells us when you see 
hate and violence and you see all kinds of threat, when you see wars and rumors of wars, when you see children turning against their parents and hating them, when you see all of these things, he says, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. He's coming. He's about ready to split the eastern sky. I'm not looking for anything this world has to offer. I'm tuning my ear in for a trumpet sound. I can't wait for the power of God to split that eastern sky and heaven to be rolled back. I know that I know I'm going to be standing there and I'm going to see him. I'm going to hear him and I'm going to go. As soon as they, that trumpet sounds, I'm going to start doing rapture jumps. I'm just waiting for the power to get underneath my feet and take me up. Let me tell you something. The Bible is clear to say, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ, they'll rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Can I tell you something? Don't worry about the chip. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Don't worry about Congress. Don't worry about the election. Worry about love God, love people. That's all you need to be worried about today. How do we bless the name of Jesus Christ in everyday life? Be a good citizen. Definitely be a good citizen. But trust and know that you, your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice that you belong to another country, that you're a citizen of another land, and you and I are getting ready to go where we have had a place prepared for us. So hang on. Live your best life. Get great paying jobs and pay your time. (laughs) Buy your pastor a house in Australia. But whatever you do, finish well finish the race and get the prize the prize is waiting he's waiting to completely consume and saturate your every thought in life and man what he's got in front of you is unbelievable Father we come to you this morning I thank you for our graduates I thank you Lord for every life each one of them all the work they put in the sacrifices they've made the parents that have mortgaged the house and the ones that have had to work two and three jobs in order to help make ends meet so that they could provide for their children. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice involved. God, they're running the race. They're ready. They're ready today to complete, finish well. Lead them, guide them, direct them by your Holy Spirit and anoint them, God, to do great and mighty things. We're so proud of them already. God, we just want to continue to see your work, your plan in their lives unfold. Bless them abundantly. Order their steps. Keep them from all harm. And let the power of the Holy Ghost guide and direct them every step of the way. As we love you and honor you and realize, Lord, at the end of it all, you, you, you are our prize. In Jesus, your blessed, holy, and wonderful name we pray today. So thankful for your mercy and your love. Thankful, God, that you saw fit to save us that you saw fit to sacrifice for us Lord there's not one person standing in this church today that got here on their own merit none of us got here because we were good enough because we could ever be good enough Lord we stand a sinner saved by grace and we thank you for grace we forgive because we're forgiven We love because you first loved us. We walk in victory because that's the promise that comes to us from your word when we have surrendered to you. We honor you today and we bless you in Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, would you please suffer me just another minute? If you're watching online or if you're even in this sanctuary today and you don't know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity to pray with us before we go. It's a simple prayer. It's not words that would do it, but if it's prayed from your heart, all of heaven begins to dance, shout, and cheer. The Bible says heaven rejoices. The angels of God rejoice over just one lost human being who comes to Jesus. 
So if you're here today and you'd pray that prayer with me and you'd accept Christ into your life, would you just slip up your hand and write back down? We're going to pray with you if you're here. Is there anyone at all? I want to pray that prayer with you today. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? I want to pray that prayer with you, Pastor. I want to pray. God bless you, son. I see you. All right. Maybe you're watching online and you want to pray that prayer with us right now. We just, you know, you don't have to, but tell somebody. But you can also just put it right there in the chat. You can say, I prayed the prayer. Someone will be in touch with you. We'll make sure you get a Bible here today. If you're with us, we'll, we'll do anything we can to help you get established in your relationship with Jesus. We want to help you be successful in what you do. So let us know so we can help you. There's a booth out in the sanctuary. They have actually information down here in the altar to my right. This is information that you're able to pick up and someone will be there to talk with you. But let's pray this simple little prayer now for these that have lifted their hands and let's, let's invite Jesus into our heart. The whole church is going to pray with you. We're going to walk with you all the way up to the throne. So let's pray together. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. You are the Son of God. You died on the cross. You rose from the dead. You walked out of the tomb. Now walk into my heart. I accept you as my Savior. I make you my Lord. Help me to be strong, to live for you till you come for me. In Jesus' name, I believe it in my heart. I confess you with my life, so I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You see that number on the screen? text 97000 if you put in the body there just set free and someone will be in touch with you and will help you get established in your relationship with Jesus God bless you guys man happy graduation to you guys I'm so glad we got to celebrate you Pastor Cam come on up here and I know he is like your greatest fan he loves you guys so much I know what it's like to be him I did that for a long time so he feels like a dad to every one of you so I'm proud of him are you proud of Cameron you love Cameron and Whitney So I want, do you have anything you want to say to them? Anything at all you want to? I know you're ready to leave, and that's great. But I want to tell you my Bible and my office and my drawers in my office and, and in my house, there are several letters that people in the church wrote to me when I was young and their age. And this is a great opportunity as they leave, maybe just to say something to encourage them and to lift them up. For we have responsibility calling to pour into their lives. Thank you all very much. God bless you for, for loving our young people do have a note here. It says, Amelia's sister, Carla, was taken to an emergency room. They're giving her a blood transfusion as we speak. Could we pray for her right now? Carla is part of our church. Let's, let's pray over her right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over Carla. We lift her up to you and pray, God, that you'll minister to her where she's at at the emergency room. Lay your hand on her, the doctors that are working with her. God, we ask you to heal her, strengthen her, and be with her. God, we declare the healing of Jesus, your word, over her life. And we believe and know that you are able, in the name of Jesus Christ, pleading your blood over her. And everyone together said amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Oh, for those who weren't able, I'm sorry I messed up the offering earlier. If you did not give earlier, you're welcome to come down and and put that in the offering place before you go. And thank you for those who, who came and got it, uh, did it earlier. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. I just want to stay in Jesus' name. I just want to stay.
I just want to stay.